Quick fun fact. Out of the 50 U.S. states, well, 52 if you include D.C. and Puerto Rico, 21 of those states and territories have one NBA team. Now, that geographical breakdown is how we determine the Eastern and Western conferences. Now, subsequently, that's how we also determine the six divisions. And within those divisions, well, you have a lot of drama. We got a lot of news. You know what I'm saying? Like it, It's a lot of content, bro. All right? So, you know, you're watching your favorite show's favorite show, Get a Bucket. I'm your host, Trey. So let's tune in and see what NBA division we're going to talk about today. The Oklahoma City Thunder are currently second in the West and fourth in the NBA. That's crazy because before the season started, I definitely said, hey, I think last season was an anomaly. Maybe they might be a little bit premature. I don't know if they're going to get to the playoffs definitively. Maybe like the play in officially, but possibly that sixth spot. Like, you know what I'm saying? That lower tier playoff spot. Um, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're number two right now and looking quite strong. My question is, going forward, should we consider someone like Josh Giddy to be their point guard or shooting guard? I know some of y'all are actually giddy about his current situation off the court. I actually think that's what's causing his problems, right? When you're looking at their stats, you see Shea Gilders Alexander giving you 31, and then you, you with 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 uh, five rebounds, six assists. You see Jalen Williams giving you 18 points a game. You see Chet Holmgren giving you depoy numbers. Rookie of the year numbers. And again, it's his rookie of the year technically, right? Josh, I need you to do a little bit better shooting. I need you to do a little bit better playmaking. Because your assist to turnover ratio is not where I want it. And I know you can do a lot better. Not to mention, if you're able to actually be the point guard and playmake and also score effectively enough. I don't need you to be a stud. Just score effectively enough, efficiently enough. That takes off a lot of pressure for Shea Gilgis Alexander to now just focus on scoring. We know he can play, mate. If he can just focus on scoring, bro, y'all are in the catbird seat. So again, Josh Giddy, I personally think you should be their point guard. Just a few tweaks you need to do. But I do believe in his ability just because I've seen the man actually get a bucket just last season. So I mean, again, small sample size. I like his talent. OKC, I think Josh Giddy should be a PG for the future. That's just me. The Portland Trailblazers are currently 14th in the Western Conference. All right. I don't want to try to get too detailed on this. I just want to say I'm focusing on two things. What's the trade value for Jeremy Grant and Anthony Simons? All right. They have a lot of talent on this team. So theoretically, they could actually keep Anthony and Jeremy Grant, both two of their best producing players on the team. But when you have players like Shaden Sharp, Malcolm, or DeAndre Ayton, and Scoot Henderson, I think the Blazers want this to be the core for the future. Anthony and Jeremy can actually fit with that core too, though. And again, they're young enough and they're on good enough contracts where, hey, they can make something shape. But what's their trade value? Well, I'm looking at both Anthony and Jeremy as third to fourth options. At least right now on a championship team. Um... Anthony, he's averaging about 27 points a game, five assists, three rebounds, and about a steal. Jeremy giving you about 22 points, three rebounds, or four rebounds, three assists, one steal, one block. If we increase just a few of those, if we tweak just a few of those just a little bit, I promise you that three to four option turns into a two to three real quick. Not comfortably third option. But again, that's a lot of teams would love to have a third option, right? So again, Jeremy Grant, Anthony Simons, y'all both could be doing a lot of things for the Portland Trailblazers, whether that's carrying them right now as a bridge to the future for success, or they get a lot in return for you guys. So Portland Trailblazers, I know y'all like Dame and stuff like that too, but over the next couple of seasons, you might need to appreciate Anthony Simons and Jeremy Grant for what they can be doing for you guys if the Portland Trailblazers get it right. That's all. But, hey, y'all boys is good in my book. I hope the Trailblazers keep y'all person. They actually can get a bucket low-key. The Utah Jazz are currently 
12th in the Western Conference. And that's not too far off from where I had to predict it, right? I thought they were good enough to possibly make the play-in, but I don't have them getting to the play-in. So 12th is where the, it, it is right there. Now, here's the thing. I'm focusing on Jordan Clarkson because they're looking, at least from my perspective, assets to move to prepare for the future, to start retooling for the future. Now, and I'm, I'm looking at this here team. We have Lori Markinen, Jordan Clarkson, Colin Sexton, George, uh, John Collins, Taylor Horton Tuckett, or Tucker, Keon, uh, Keontae George, Walker Kessler. Like, these are some decent players to look for in the future. Um, some are role players, but more than likely, some will be an all-star too. But this team ain't constructed for this season. And when I'm looking at Jordan Clarkson, again, I think he can do it someone like Colin Sexton has been doing, but Colin Sexton is younger on a better contract. So Jordan Clarkson, you're the one that's going to be moved, unfortunately. But fortunately, at the same time, you're in a better situation. Hopefully, I think it will be good for both environments. Because again, Jordan Clarkson, you now will more than likely be with a contender, at least somebody who can make a push for, for a play in, in the playoffs. And Utah gets somebody, at least a couple of draft picks, that can work out for them as well. Which they have a boatload as well. So the more draft picks, the better. At least OKC's been showing, hey, that kind of helps out. So again, Utah, I don't think y'all can jazz it up this season. But for the future, you at least need to start preparing for that. And I think trading Jordan Clarkson is one thing that you should start doing now. Just saying. The Minnesota Timberwolves are the number one team in the Western Conference. I, I, I wanted to say NBA because that sounds so crazy. But there is, it's just in the Western Conference right now. They're about like a game away maybe from the Celtics. But... That's not bad at all either, considering, well, look, we got Anthony Edwards at the helm. You might have been saying this too early. Cats looking smooth. Go Bears eye. They team's looking in place, okay? I'm starting to question, though, one thing, because I'm thinking about a future thing, a future, future discussion. Should the Wolves keep this team as is? Or should they look to break it up and possibly bring in somebody else? Because, listen, you know, Mike Conley's getting older. Maybe somebody wants Mike Conley. They can package up Mike Conley and, and Rudy Gobert. Maybe you can try to flip Carl Anthony Towns or somebody else. Should we be doing that or should we just actually let this team play out? I think sometimes we actually jump the gun. And with this Wolves team, they're currently number one. Last season, they struggled, but I think that was team chemistry. This season, you're seeing the potential. I said last thing, they can be a top four seed in the West. They're number one in the West, number two in the NBA. So I think you actually should keep this team together because they're looking like a solid trio right now, a solid squad. But it's a, you know, it's a long season. There are a couple of things could happen, so let's find out. But I do expect for this Wolves team, at least I hope, for this Wolves team to stay intact. Management, don't be stupid. Please don't. Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Edwards, Rudy Gobert, Mike Conley. You have a solid two-year window. Don't mess it up. But, yeah, Wolves fans, hey, I hope for y'all's sake y'all can believe in your management and have a pretty good season. Let's see how it goes. The Denver Nuggets are currently third in the West, not NBA, West, all right? So I know you might be walking about, you know, you might be wondering why the champions could be a little low. Which, you might be wondering why I'm saying third is low. It's all subjective. But you might be wondering, too, are they on a championship low? Because I don't see, the one, the depth being the same. Yeah, they got some Pete. They got a couple players that have been doing okay, right? Like, they've been playing pretty well. Reggie Jackson, shout out to you. Christian Braun, you know what I mean? Like, you do okay. Um, yeah, it's looking a little tough out there in them in, in, in the Nugget streets. You know what I'm saying? The starters is really the bread and butter, which is, I guess, what helped win the championship last year. I just feel like it's a championship lull that they're on right now. I'm not getting the same feel as I did last season. But again, I can't be too mad at that. They're third in the West, and it's really a tie for second. So I'm going, you know, the Wolves are ahead of them right now because they got tiebreaker. But... They're not too, if they win a game, they're ahead of the Wolves right now. So it could be close to second. I ain't getting on them right now. It just feels like they're on the championship lull. So going forward, come playoffs, 
I am expecting them to ramp it up. And I'm curious where the Nuggets will be looking or where the Nuggets will be seated and how, how people will be feeling about the Nuggets. Again, it's early. It's a lot more basketball left. I am expecting that ramp up to happen a little bit later on. So let's see what happens if this championship lull is actually real or not. Just say, I really feel like it is just a smidge, just a smidge. Sports is one of the few things that genuinely connects us together. Whether with coworkers, friends, family, we all love the entertainment. Well, here on Get a Bucket, my goal is to talk about sports and its cultural impact. The WNBA, for example. The WNBA is loads of entertainment. From the new rookies battling, displaying their skill sets, and preparing to take the league by storm, to the titans and the MVPs of the league clashing for battles we'll always remember. From imagining the soon-to-be possibilities, to admiring and treasuring the finales. Get a Bucket is a platform where other sports analysts, hoopers, coaches, and fans of the show come and talk about the WNBA, both negatives and positives. So if you haven't, take a quick peek. At the very least, you'll have a good time. Remember, sports is one of the few things that genuinely connects us together. So please, tune in and stay connected. Didn't I tell you there was drama? Didn't I tell you there was news? Didn't I tell your ass you were going to like it? Like, bro... There's so much to talk about within the divisions. Like, who's crazy? But don't worry, though. We will definitely have more to talk about. There's so much more to talk about. So don't, 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 don't be upset. But look, please continue to support the page. You know, like, subscribe, comment, tell anyone who's anyone about the show. My name is Trey. I'm the host of your favorite show's favorite show. Get a bucket. Hope you all have a good one. Take care. <laughs> Not know you guys were still here. As, as, as you can see, we're at the back end of the show. No pun intended, but look, hope you all enjoyed it. And before you go, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow the IG account, share the content to anybody who's anybody. And most importantly, leave your thoughts and comments below. But I gotta go back and play Buddy in 2K, so let me unmute him real quick. Excuse me. Hey, boss, I'm back. Nah, you better catch this word. You know, we get buckets around here, too.